Welcome to the House of God International Headquarters, located in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We know that you will be blessed. To learn more about the House of God, visit us online at www.houseofgod.org. Be blessed. Greetings to each of you today. Thank God for our time together. This is Bishop Thomas Clark and excited about being with you on our weekly presentation uh, this week. Pray things are well. I know I've experienced the mercy of God, the grace of God this week, and I know that you have too. Uh, we look forward to this time that we have each week together when we share in these presentations. So thank you so very much uh, for being with me today, and we pray that uh, what we will say will be meaningful to all of you that are watching. Uh, before getting started, there are a, a few announcements that I want to make. Those of you that are House of God members and those of you that observe the Lord's feast days, uh, we're coming into the uh, beginning of the feast of the seventh month. Uh, that includes the, the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement and, of course, the Feast of Tabernacles. If you are a feast observer, this is a very exciting time uh, coming up on God's feast day calendar. Looking forward to it very much. Of course, the first feast that we will experience will be the Feast of Trumpets, uh, which happens on October uh, 2nd and 3rd, uh, coming up very close. So we're anticipating that, looking forward to a very wonderful time uh, in the Feast of the Lord this year. Our second announcement has to do with our annual uh, Minister's Conference, uh, which happens the last weekend in October. That's October 25th and 26th. That will be convening. It is one of our national conferences. It will be convening this year in Lachlan, Ohio. Uh, traditionally, we have all of our conferences here on our national campus, but because of confliction or some conflicts in, in accommodations and hotels and available accommodations for those of you that will be coming into Lexington, uh, we're unable to have it this year at our National Temple, but we will have it in Lachlan, Ohio, which is about 80 miles north of here, uh, right in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. So we're looking forward to that conference. Uh, great plans are being made for that conference. I hope that all of you will make plans to meet us in Lachlan, Ohio uh, on October 25th and 26th. So mark your calendars, uh, make your reservations and arrangements to be present for our National Ministers Conference again, convening in Lachlan, Ohio this year on October 25th and 26th. So we're looking very much uh, seeing you there. I know we're going to have a blessed time in that Ministers Conference. Now, for the past several weeks, I've been dealing uh, with a subject uh, that I think is important. I hope that you've found it meaningful as well. It's taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 19 and 20. In those two verses, Paul talks about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he talks about it from the perspective of our bodies really being the place where the Holy Spirit dwells in us, uh, in our bodies. He also lets us know that we're not our own, but we're bought with a price. And of course, that means that Jesus Christ uh, paid the price for our sins, shed his blood on our behalf, uh, that we might have the opportunity of salvation uh, through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think all of us are aware of that part, but the emphasis over the past several weeks has been 
for us to take care of and maintain uh, the temple of the Holy Ghost. We understand what Jesus did in making the sacrifice, but sometimes we don't take the care that we should in uh, our physical house, our physical body, in giving it what it needs in order to be the strong temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes, uh, we abstain from sin, we repent of our sins, and we do all of those things on the spiritual side. But taking care of, maintaining the temple of the Holy Ghost, that it will be able to do all of those things that God has empowered us to do through the Spirit. So I encourage you today to be sure that you're taking the best possible care of the temple of the Holy Ghost, that you're giving it the rest it needs, the food it needs, uh, the, the physical medical care that it needs, that we might be able to maximize the use of our bodies in the body of Christ. Sometimes we are negligent, negligent in taking care of that. We put more emphasis on the spiritual side than we do on the natural side. And we think that God's just going to take care of us. Uh, he's going to heal us of all of our diseases. We're going to overcome all the things that happen to us, uh, our physical health, our mental health. Uh, we don't pay a lot of attention to that. So I've been encouraging you over the last several weeks and giving you examples where Jesus himself took care of his temple, took care of his body in giving it rest when it needed and refreshing when it needed, taking care of his mental health, doing those things that are necessary for us to be able to perform in our natural bodies at the level that we need to. Sometimes we, we read scriptures in the Bible that are very familiar, and we don't apply those scriptures in the sense that God intended them. And one of those scriptures, I think, is misapplied so many times. It's back in the Old Testament, goes back to the time uh, when Israel was in Egypt and suffering persecution, and, and uh, God delivered them. But there's a verse in Exodus chapter 15. I hope you'll pay attention to it if you've not uh, cited it or, or, or familiar with it. I want to read it to you today so that you'll be sure that you make the proper application of this verse. This goes back to the time when Israel was in Egypt. It goes back to the time uh, when God struck them with all the plagues that we're so familiar with when we read the story of the exodus out of Egypt, the plagues that God himself placed on the Egyptians, uh, the ancient Egyptians, uh, to let them know that he was the God and the only true and living God. It wasn't about uh, the, the animals that they, they worshipped. It wasn't about some of the things that they attributed power to. But he was the one. So in Exodus chapter 15, looking at verse 26, you'll find these words. Our Lord himself shared this with Moses, shared it with uh, Israel, that they might know that what happened with the Egyptians was strategically planned uh, for them to see that there was no power in those calves that they worship, the bulls that they worship, the frogs, all those things, the Nile River that they worship, all of those things were part of their culture and their religious traditions. The plagues that God struck them with were planned to strike at those deities that they had set up as, as being gods that had power. So listen to what God says to Moses uh, and to the children of Israel uh, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, and this is God speaking to them, speaking to Moses, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right 
in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his judgments and statutes. I will not put on, I will not put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Context, when you read this verse, when you read this verse, it's important to understand the context that God was looking at and the perspective that he was looking at. Those diseases, those plagues that were placed upon the Egyptians were placed upon them because of their failure to recognize the God of the universe, to failure to recognize the one God that was Lord over all things. And God placed on them those plagues. What plagues are we talking about? The disease that the cattle had, the plague of darkness, the plague of the frogs, the plagues of the blood uh, that, that fill the rivers and streams, those things that God strategically placed on them to show them that those elements that they worship had no power. Now, does this mean, and this is where the misapplication comes so many times, does this mean you're not going to get sick because God said that he wouldn't put any of the plagues on you that he placed on the Egyptians or he wouldn't put them on Israel? Does it mean that you and I uh, won't contract certain viruses and certain diseases and uh, cancer and other things that happens as a part of the human experience? Does it mean that we won't get those things? It doesn't mean that. It does not mean that. So when you look at that verse, as some do, and isolate that verse and take it out of context to say that I'm not going to get heart disease, I'm not going to get any of the diseases that are so common in our world today, uh, Alzheimer's won't affect me, blood pressure issues won't affect me, diabetes won't affect me. Does that, is, is that what this verse means? The answer is absolutely not. That's not what this verse means. And so many times, believers grab this one verse, isolate it, misapply it, and uh, suffer much distress and sometimes death because they fail to get the physical examinations, they fail to get the tests that they need, they fail to go see their doctors, they fail to exercise the opportunity that God has placed for all of us uh, in this age where we have vaccines, uh, we have medications, we have surgery, we have treatments for many, many diseases and ailments. So I, want, I don't want you to be a victim of shortening your life because you say, None of these diseases are going to fall on me because I am a child of God. I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. God said he wouldn't put on me any of the diseases that he put on the Egyptians. That was isolated for that time and for that specific uh, experience. For you and I, I urge you, I urge you, employ you, be sure that you take advantage of the medical science, the, the, the solutions that God has provided for us today uh, through medication and through medicine that will help us. And the surgeries, and the surgeries. You must remember, I say this frequently, you must remember that God gave man wisdom and knowledge. He gave him the ability to learn. He gave him the ability in science and medicine and all of these things. He gave that ability to man. So don't be one of those Christians or believers that said, I'm not going to the doctor. The Lord will heal me. 
God has all healing power in his hands. Yes, he does. God will deliver us at his will from some of the diseases and things that follow, that befall us. But he also, he also uses the wisdom and knowledge of medical science. So don't isolate this verse and have your life shortened because you fail to see your doctor or your health professional to help you with diseases. The other thing that I want you to remember, yes, God answers prayer. The Bible talks about if there's any sick among us that we should call for the elders of the church and, and the elders will come and pray and anoint us with oil and, and God will heal us and deliver us. That still applies. But that does not preclude you and I from getting an annual physical, from going to your doctor, from using the technology that's available to us today by x-rays and, and CT scans and all uh, MRIs and all the other things that God has provided for us. But it does mean that the power of prayer, yes, it works. But you must couple that with being sure that you're seeing your health professional and that you're getting your body checked. Remember, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And let me add, Paul adds in that 20th verse, that you're bought with a price. You're bought with a price. There's been the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed for you and I. Don't squander that. Don't squander that. Don't cut your day short because you fail to take advantage of what God has provided. That is not to say you shouldn't call on your pastor. Uh, you should not call on your elders in the church to pray for you and those, those men and women that make connection with God for us. But by no means do not neglect to take advantage of what God has provided. He does use doctors. He uses surgeons. He uses health professionals to help us. So I want to emphasize that. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, because in, in that chapter, it talks about the deliverance of God. It talks about how God delivered Israel. It talks about the, the miracles that were performed. It talks about the power of God that delivered them. Yes, absolutely true. But it also lets us know that those diseases, those plagues that were up on the pagan worshipers of that day through their deities, that God struck those very animals that they thought had the power. So remember that. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is the temple that, that, that the Holy Ghost dwells in. Let us take excellent care of it. Let us remember, let us remember that that is the body that God uses to help others, to bring others to Christ, to evangelize, to be the hands and eyes and, and, and presence of God for so many people. Don't cut that short. Don't cut that part of your life short. Your family needs you. This world needs you. It needs your love. It needs your gifts that God has given you. Keep that body strong. Keep your mind strong. Your mental health means so much as to whether or not you can be the, the evangelist, the missionary that God would have you be. Let me give you some, let me give you an example of this. Mental health means so much. If you're depressed, if you are laden down with stress and pressure, you can't be the best missionary or the best disciple. 
you, you, you're mentally, you're just not focused. You're not able to be able to communicate at the level that God wants you to. That's why after some of the, some of the healing uh, events that Christ had, when his mind was, was exhausted, when he had been with thousands of people in ministry, at the end of that, he sought a time of relaxation, a time to be refreshed. And you need that too. If Jesus rested, you can rest too. There were times when he escaped to the mountains. You remember the example that we shared the other week when they were on the ship that after Jesus had ministered to thousands of people on the Sermon on the Mount, after he had, he had poured out his strong ability to preach and to teach. And, and when that was all over, he found himself needing to be replenished. There are times you need to be replenished. Replenish the temple. It's tired. We don't talk about this enough. We don't share this with others enough because we're so empowered by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. We're so empowered by the goodness that God gives us. How, how many of you get eight hours rest at night or nine hours? Our society is so conditioned to work and to work and to work and to work, but your body needs rest. So your temple, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It needs rest. It needs nutrients, it needs food, it needs relaxation, it needs all of those things. So when you come to church, when you come to church and you have a wonderful spiritual service and you pray and you dance and you sing and you read the scriptures and that spiritual part of you is revitalized, but the natural part needs rest as well. Jesus gave us a model. He said, one day a week for rest, when, when you don't work and you don't do your ordinary work. Some of us, if it were not for that, you'd work seven days a week. You would work seven days a week. So remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to do its part. It's always done its part. It is going to quicken. It's going to do all of those things. But you must make a conscious effort to take care of it. Take care of it. Take care of your eyes. Take care of your heart. All of this wonderful, marvelous, miraculous creation called the human body that God has given us. Let's not abuse it. Let's not abuse it. More emphasis placed on the spiritual than the natural. That's just the way most of us are. And we don't consider the temple of the Holy Ghost itself. So I'm going to wrap up with this today. But I want to remind you, through the coming days, through the coming weeks, take a look at yourself. How much time are you spending taking care of the temple of the Holy Ghost? You say, but I'm in mission work. I have, I've got to take care of others. You cannot take care of others effectively unless you take care of yourself. And by the way, some of you that are watching today, that are sharing with me today, are caregivers. Are caregivers taking care of aging parents or a husband or a wife or children, and spending hours attending to others. How much time are you devoting to finding time to take care of yourself? Your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. You want that body to be strong and healthy. Find a way. How many of us put some type of of physical activity on your list or, re or, or rest time, relaxation time on your list. How many of us put ourselves as a priority? We're so conditioned to extending to others 
until sometimes we neglect ourselves. I want to be able to preach and teach as long as the Lord will allow me. But I understand that your body and your mind need rest. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm concluding this series today, but I'm concluding it with a strong appeal to all of you that are watching today. Take care of the temple. Take care of your body. Don't wait until it's exhausted. Don't wait until you're virtually worn out before you realize, I need to do something. God expects us to take care of it. He's done a wonderful job. He's given us, our bodies have a life expectancy, looking at the Bible, uh, three score and 10, four score, that's 80 years. That's a long time. In order for that, your body to be able to function at the level that God intended, we've got to take care of it. God bless you today. Thank you. Don't forget that verse, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Don't pull it out of context. <clears throat> if you live long enough, there will be things that will happen to your body. And those things that happen are not diseases that God's putting on you. It happens to be the environment and all the things that we're exposed to that sometimes impact our bodies. So God bless you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment. I appreciate you. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, we thank you today for all of your mercy and your grace. and We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, God, for giving us this wonderful temple, our bodies, that gives us so much pleasure, that gives us so many wonderful experiences. We thank you for all the senses that you've given us that we can appreciate the environment. We can appreciate the heavens. We can appreciate the landscape. We appreciate our families. Help us, God, to be able to take care of our bodies that will be able to glorify you in our bodies with longevity and with all the attributes that you designed for us. Thank you, God. We ask your presence upon our listeners and viewers today. This prayer I pray in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless all of you.